Hello and welcome back guys. In this part we're going to study the control flow in Rust. More specifically the conditions or the if expressions. In any programming language controlling the flow of execution is based on two things. Conditions and repeating actions. Now I know most of you didn't know that conditions and repeating actions are related to each other and together they are called control flow. So in this tutorial specifically we are going to talk about if expressions. Um, before that, let me just initialize a new project. Okay, uh, let me just shut that. Let's go here to just, I'll close this. And we'll go to the source in the main. And let me shut that. All right, so let's talk about if else or the if expressions. Now I will assume that you know already what if expressions are, but still I will say this for those of you who have no idea what the flip I'm talking about. So it says here simply an if expression allows you to branch your code depending on conditions. So basically you provide a condition and then state if this condition is met, run this block of code. If the condition is not met, do not run this block of code. Simply put, if it trains, take with you the umbrella, else do not take your umbrella. That's all what if expressions is all about, for those of you who do not know. So let's suppose that we want to create a small program to check whether a certain person with an age less than 18 to let them know if they are eligible to drive a vehicle or not. And you want this program to behave differently based on whether this condition is true or false. So to do that, I'm going to define age so let age equal to let's say 18 and you can do type annotation here so we'll say um, an assigned value of 16 all right after i want to put a condition this condition is going to check if the age is equal to or more than 18 in this case you can drive a car else you're still a minor or you still cannot drive a car to do that i'm going simply to say if age is more than or equal to 18. In this case, uh, between curly braces notice, print a line you're old enough to vote. <laughs> That's funny. This is by tab nine, by the way. It's like GitHub Copilot. So we'll say here, print a line. Um, I'm just going to change the message. You can drive a car. After the curly brace here, I can do else. In this case, and that's again tab 9, uh, print ln, you can't drive a car. All right, so that's the condition. If we will run our program, we'll do cargo run. You can see here that you can drive a car because the condition was met and age is equal to 18. And our condition was if age is more than or equal to 18, then we want to print you can drive a car. By the way, if you want to bypass those ugly warnings, you can come in your project here and you can uh, just type that. Hash sign exclamation mark. Those uh, square brackets allow warnings in parentheses. Let's try that again. Let's do cargo run. And you can see it's much, much cleaner. And we have, of course, the same result. But this is in case of only one if expression. But sometimes we have multiple conditions with else if. And for those of you who are programming in Python, it's something like elif. Because basically elif, it's else if in Python. Um, also, it's in JavaScript in most of the programming languages, it's else if. So it's the same in Rust. Um, let's have another example. Let me just comment all of those lines out. And I will come here, we'll say, let number, for instance, so we'll have a number, and that number is equal to six. Okay, uh, let me just add a comment here, multiple conditions with else if. So number is equal to six. And I want to check out if number with the modulo sign four is equal to zero. In other words, if this number is divisible by zero and will not return any remainder. So 
in that case I want to print a line that says that number is divisible by 4. Now we want to check out different conditions not only one because if only one extra condition we will just type else but if we have different conditions to check then in this case we'll do else if number is with the modulo 3 equal to 0 in this case uh, we want to print out that number is divisible by 3 the same case with the number modulo 2 uh, we will print number is divisible by 2 else we will print number is not divisible by 4 3 or 2 all right so these are the different conditions that we are checking in case of the number is equal to 6 of course if we will change the number the condition checking and the results are going to be different okay so let's go ahead and run that okay so we have here number is divisible by 3 of course because we have defined here we have hard-coded the number to be 6 you can be more creative you can you know have this small program that you prompt the user to enter a number and then based on that number entered by the user the checking is going to happen and of course the result is going to be different according to the number entered the last example that we have is we can use if in a let statement how so let's say for instance that we have a certain condition which is set to true for instance okay now we can do like that we can define or declare a variable called number this number is going to check if condition is true then we want 5 else we want 6 so if the condition is true number or the value of 5 is going to be assigned to that variable number else 6 is going to be assigned to number and of course you can print that number instead of doing that we can do like this directly all right so in this code number will be assigned either 5 or 6 based on the value of the condition uh, let's check out the result number is indeed 5 why because the condition is true now if you will change that to false we'll run that again of course number will be 6 now remember that it's very important to ensure that the types of values in each arm of the if expressions are compatible by the way this is called arm okay or else you will encounter errors when you will compile your code okay so for instance that if we will change this 6 here to 6 like this okay that's not correct because the expression in the if block evaluates to an integer and the expression in the else block evaluates to a string and if we we'll run that of course we will have a type error so you can see here that if and else have incompatible types that's a type error so basically if and else have incompatible types if expected integer and else found a string and that's basically everything you need to know in the conditions which is a part of the control flow in Rust programming language thank you and i will see you in the next part